Imagine being lucky enough to live your dream. Imagine being lucky enough to do that at age 25. Finally, imagine being so lucky that the whole adventure turned out to far exceed even your greatest hopes. A decade ago, I was that lucky, but little did I realise that it would overshadow the rest of my life. When I first had the idea of living on a boat, I envisioned living on the sort of boat that I have now, 45 foot long and more than comfortable enough for me living as a single sailor afloat. However, back then, in my impatience and excitement to start boat life, coupled with my refusal to go into any debt for the project, I found myself purchasing a tiny 30-foot boat with only 15 foot of indoor space and spending the following four years or so sleeping on a sofa bed. But even in those minimal conditions, as I say, narrowboat life far exceeded all of my hopes and dreams. One of the things that living in such minimal space, day in, day out, really taught me was just how little I actually needed to be happy and to be content. Always into the great outdoors and walking and cycling, I'd never envisioned the boat being too much more than a headquarters to set out on further adventures into the countryside. However, particularly during the winter times, having such a small area to cosy up and hunker down while the wind and the rain hammered away outside, I really grew to understand just how little of what we all think is important actually matters. As long as I had fuel for the fire, relatively consistent electricity pump into the lights, and some kind of communication device, in this case a laptop or an iPad, which allowed me to edit my videos and also write my books, I was pretty much fine. Living in such a small space also brought with it incredibly low costs. Narrowboat life is not inherently cheap, but the way that I've always lived it is exceptionally cheap when compared to the times that I've lived on dry land. And back then, my annual costs for running the boat, including things like the boat licence and insurance, were coming in well below £2,000 a year, which allowed me to work only part-time hours and still live in great comfort. Depending, of course, on your definition of comfort, that sofa bed certainly wouldn't suit everybody. Once again, I'd like to ask you to imagine yourself in my shoes, stepping into this incredibly small world, but incredibly satisfying lifestyle, as a very immature 25-year-old with very little real-world experience of life. And then think, not only is the life in and around the boat so great, but I want to show you on screen now three places that are within maybe 20 minutes walk of where I could moor up a boat. The Horseshoe Falls, Dinisbran Castle and Teemower Country Park. Having my humble little low cost life and being able to park that lifestyle almost next door to such incredible places and then go out and wander amongst these natural, calm, beautiful environments 
is something that I cannot, cannot express or overstate the significance of as part of your day-to-day life. To many people, this would be an unbearably lonely lifestyle, but as a lifelong loner before having a boat, it wasn't too much of a shift for me. Relationships and connections, however, were a lot more difficult to maintain at this point of my life, as myself and my peers started to head to our late twenties, living almost in different realities. So the connection and relatability of our experiences drifted and drifted, where I was seen as somewhat of a dropout with my part-time hours and my wandering through the British countryside most of my time, and I'd struggle to get my head around the extraordinary way they lived, where they would spend in two months more than I would spend in a year. Significantly for them though, they were working towards a future with a family and children, whereas I felt like I'd skipped 40 years of my life and gone from being a stupid kid to being a stupid adult who was in some kind of semi-retirement. But then, one long wet winter, everything changed. And for reasons that, in hindsight, I don't fully understand, I decided to abandon boat life and try giving normal life on land a go. But after months of living in a very comfortable flat, I still had almost no furniture, as I was still living a very solitary life, so had nobody to impress and no reason to get a lot of odds and ends. I would be working full-time hours, but still spending every second I could going out into the countryside. Very often this would lead me to be heading out at 11 o'clock at night, enjoying the starlit and moonlit fields, and especially some of those beautiful frosty, chilly winter's nights on the outskirts of a rural town. It soon dawned on me that I was basically just living a boat life, but with added expense and very little else in return. And so it took me less than two years to start looking for another boat. Now, this was a strange era when I moved on to my current boat. I'm not entirely certain, again, what my concern was, but I just couldn't settle. And just before the great 2020 debacle, as we'll describe it, I found myself moving back, bizarrely enough, to the very flat that I had previously rented. And you know what? I didn't even make it the full six month minimum contract term of the rental before I had started to take my furniture and do up my boat once again. And then within a year, I was back on board and went on to live one of the best periods of my life ever, all over again on that same stretch of beautiful canal, as the world around me seemed to turn to absolute chaos. For the last six months, my boat has been practically empty and ready to sell. During this time, I've been lucky enough to have a girlfriend who has allowed me to take over half of her house with my model railway, a miniature gym, and half of the items from the boat for storage. Yet, apart from one person who's been to view the boat, I haven't actually tried to sell the boat in that time. That's because I need to make sure I have my next boat lined up or ready to go. At this moment, I could sell the boat move in with my girlfriend full-time and never look back. 
However, only a fool would give up all of what I've spoken about today for a third time, surely. In fact, after doing the rounds, visiting friends and family last month, I turned up at my girlfriend's house to discover she was sat at the kitchen table writing a pros and cons list of whether she would like to live on a boat 